all the participants here with us in the room in Poland and uh, as well as to all the people connected from all over Europe. I mean, we came now to the final uh, uh, part of our conference. There will be two people with, with me on stage, let's say physically and virtually. Uh, the first one is Jan Plage, the president of iFarm Organics Europe, which I would like to see on the screen if possible. Hello, Jan. Welcome. Hi, Eduardo. Good to see you. See you. You're right. Uh, Aria, Jan, can you hear me? Yes, but uh, with a strange sound. So, but I'm I'm pretty well. If I understood your questions right, but I I hear the sound um, double. We will fix it because uh, you will not be the first speaker now to speak because actually we have a, a guest who came from uh, virtually from Brussels but physically here in Poland, uh, the Commissioner Wojcicki, the Commissioner for Agriculture and Rural Development of the European Commission and we are very glad that he's here with us and uh, we'll uh, say a few words as concluding remark of this conference and we are very glad that we have a Commissioner which has uh, a very good vision about the development of agriculture, especially about how organic should develop. So. Mr. Commissioner, thank you very much for being with us. I would like to give you the floor. If you take my place, you can talk from this podium. Thank you. Na wstępie przepraszam moich rodaków, że z, będąc w Polsce nie będę mówił w ojczystym języku, ale z przyczyn organizacyjnych jest sugerowane, żeby to było wystąpienie w języku angielskim z uwagi na transmisję. Good afternoon to everybody participating in today's conference. Thank you very much for IFOAM and for the Polish Chamber of Organic Production for invitation to this conference. It is my pleasure to, to participate. I hope that you have all enjoyed a successful and rewarding conference over these last two days. I'm very pleased to join you today to provide some closing remarks on this important conference and uh, on this important topic. Since the European Commission uh, adopted the action plan for organic production earlier this year, I have spent uh, much of my time speaking on this topic and spreading the gospel of organic farming. Uh, one uh, week ago, on 23rd of September, I launched the EU Organic Day in Brussels, along with representatives of the Council of the European Union and the European Parliament, with participation uh, Economic Social Committee, uh, Committee of Regions, and also Mr. President Jan Plage, participating in this event. Thank you for that. Thank you for initiatives, for ins inspiration to establish this, this uh, organic day, which will be the uh, uh, in, uh, also celebrated in the in future, always 23rd of September. Celebrating in the EU White Organic Day is just one of the initiatives included under the Organic Action Plan which is focused on the ambitious targets that we have set under the Farm to Fork and Biodiversity Strategies for 2030. Uh, to put 25% of the European Union farmland under organic agriculture and to accomplish a significant increase in organic ag aquaculture. These targets reflect the fact that organic production will be key in Europe's transition to sustainable agriculture and food system. Uh, the plan sets out to make these targets achievable with 23 concrete actions to boost demand, supply and sustain sustainability in the organic sector. Uh, it outlines how we can balance the best practices for our environment, climate and biodiversity with strong economic returns for our farmers, especially those who run small and medium-sized family farms. The plan will support organic farmers to follow high animal welfare standards, which is especially important for me, 
and high production standards using natural substances and uh, processes in line with growing consumer demand. The Commission is ready to push this plan and to place EU organic production higher on the political agenda. Uh, as I have mentioned, we have already launched the EU Organic Day, which will be celebrated on 21st of September every year. Uh, we will also create organic ambassadors to champion and promote the development of the sector. However, the plan does not only require action at uh, an European Union level, it must take root in every member states, every regions and every locality. To achieve this, the Commission has invited member states to develop, update their national organic action plans. These national action plans should be developed in synergy with the national CAP strategic plans, all already being prepared by member states but they must also take in other policy tools outside of the CEP to focus on developing organics beyond agriculture and rural, develop, uh, rural development. Also the recovery plan, recovery funds are very important in this, uh, for the development of the organic uh, sector, especially for the development of the organic processing industry. Uh, I'm glad to see that the Polish Minister of Agriculture and Rural Development has already adopted the Framework Action Plan for Organic Food and Farming in Poland for 2021 to 2027. In Poland, only 1.4 uh, of farms managed at least some organic land and only 3.5% of agricultural land is currently under organic farming. This is rather limited compared to the EU average of 8.5% and compared to some member states like Austria or Estonia who are already close to or have already ex uh, exceeded uh, 25% target. For Poland, re reaching uh, Reaching this target will be a challenge, but also an incredible opportunity. The Polish government has communicated to me its goal to make Poland a major producer of organic food in Europe. I very much welcome this ambition and the way it is uh, targeted in the Polish action plan. Firstly, the action plan is based on wide-ranging consultation with stakeholders, which always bodes well for the acceptance and successes of, of an action plan. Uh, it will also be updated on a rolling basis. Secondly, the plan takes a comprehensive ac approach to the development of the entire organic value chain and is clearly structured into four main lines of action which align very well with the European Union action plan. Knowledge transfer, innovation in organic production, support for organic producers, and maintaining confidence in the organic farming system. Finally, the Polish government is not losing any time and the implementation of the action plan has started already. To give a few examples, information and promotion activities are already being carried out to increase consumer demand for organic products and to maintain consumer confidence. Existing procedures for organic production have been simplified and made more user-friendly. The use of organic seed being, is being supported. A support mechanism is being developed for the consumption of organic food in schools and kindergartens. And uh, a handbook of, on green public procurement is being drawn up. I am fully confident that by continuing this strong start, Poland will indeed succeed in becoming one of the main organic producers in Europe. There are two aspects of the plan that I, I'd like to highlight in particular. Firstly, it is striking in Poland's approach in the focus on small farms. This is something that I fully support. Unlike some aspects of agriculture, organic production is naturally titled in favor of 
smaller farms. These farms often already operate in more sustainable ways so that the conversion to organic production constitute less of challenge. Organic production also enables smaller farmers to balance the factors of production and thus place their produce on the market more efficiently. In addition, organic products usually fetch higher prices on the market and organic production is widely perceived as a rapidly growing market for years to come. Organic farming therefore provides small farms with a real opportunity to contribute to our food security in a sustainable and economically viable manner. This is also why the European Union Action Plan also includes support for small farmers, not only through the financial adv advisory support of the CAP, but also with dedicated actions on strengthening their position in the value chain, like developing group certification and short supply chains. Short supply chains are particularly interesting in an organic context. By reducing the number of intermediaries to a minimum and by strengthening the links between farmers and consumers, they help to achieve two important objectives. At once, ensuring affordable prices for consumers and fair in incomes for farmers. This contributes towards a just transition to more sustainable agri-food systems in line with the farm to fork strategy. And the COVID crisis has also shown that the resilience of the food system is strengthened by ensuring a diverse, diversified chain combining both shorter and lo longer supply chains. Supporting the development of short supply chains can therefore maximize the benefits of organic production. In conclusion, this is important to note and as discussions on the benefits of organic production often tends to focus only on environmental aspects. I have therefore chosen to highlight the importance of championing small farmers and short supply chains in the development of organic production. Because the full potential of organic farming lies not only in its environmental impacts, but also in its ability to bring real social and economic benefits to farmer and rural areas. As I mentioned at the beginning, I have spent much time in recent months speaking about the potential of organic farming. Now it is time for all of us to take action. I am confident that the both the European Organic Action Plan and the uh, Polish National Action Plan set out concrete action that can help us to reach our targets and realize the full potential of organic farming in the European Union. I look forward to working with you towards this goal. Thank you very much. Sir Commissioner, Commissioner, Comm thank you very much for your words. They are always encouraging and give us the energy to keep uh, doing the job we're doing, converting more farmers, converting more companies, structuring supply chain to make sure that this important target of 25% will be reached. And now we really at the final part of our conference. We have Jan Plage who is uh, gonna tell us a few words and maybe trying also to wrap up a bit the main messages of this conference. So Jan, uh, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Eduardo, um, and uh, a very warm thank uh, to our Commissioner Janusz Wojciechowski. So your, your, your last word are really welcomed um, when, when you say now I, I have spoken so long about the challenges and the potential of organic and what it can deliver. And um, now it's part of the main policies of the European Commission and many member states, as you, as you said, uh, and now it's time to take action. That is um, the, exactly the situation 
as we observe, as we feel, and as we like it, because we want to act and we want to create results for um, for the society, for the environment. And I think for us, it is um, very clear for us, for the society, for the European Commission, that we face not only this huge challenge of climate change and the collapse of biodiversity, but that we that we face a huge challenge, not if or um, uh, if we have to change our farming and food systems and our whole economy. But the main challenge and the main question is how and who will deliver this change. The farm to fork and the EU um, biodiversity strategy both have placed organic farming in the core of this transition, and that is what we welcome and it's kind of historic moment um, where, where we are proud to be part of this big task and um, challenges but um, that is our nature that we want to um, be part of the solution and be part of the actions and in this context what what um, we discussed with a lot of operators and processing in retailing, trading, and other experts all around the value chain from farming on is now the question, how can we do the right actions that we deliver 25% organic food in Europe? And in this context, um, I will um, give you some impressions from last week, what Commissioner Wojciechowski already mentioned, where, where um, Commissioner um, Wojciechowski invited a lot of stakeholders for um, the inauguration of the first organic day in Europe, in, in the EU. Um, summarizing what the stakeholders from Copa Cochega, from Eurocommerce, from the Committee of Regions, from the Social Committee, from the consumer organizations, from environmentalists, they all are um, ha having having said from the young farmers, from Seja. So there were a, a lot of um, uh, speeches on this first EU Organic Day describing uh, why organic is the right answer and what policy has to do that this answer and the actions can be successful when measured every year on the 23rd of September and look back, were the actions right? Were we successful? Do we have impact? And what do we have to change maybe to be even more successful? And that was really a strong commitment. So nobody has asked if the policy is right. The general policy of the Green Deal and the special policy and changing the food systems and putting organic in the heart of this transformation. And there were, um, for example, uh, uh, a very, for me, a, a very important contribution from the consumer organization, from the European um, consumer organization, which, which clearly said, so what we, we have to change a lot um, in, in many policies, but at the end, the main challenge is to change the consumer habits. So to convert, and that was her, ver her words, how to convert not only farmers and in their farming methods or processors, um, but how to convert the shopping habits and the, uh, the cooking habits uh, of um, the European consumers. And that is, that is our holistic approach what we ask the Commission when, when, when they um, discuss the organic action plan, not only looking on um, converting farmers to organic farming, but converting the whole value chain, including the consumers. And to reach this very important and right action or result to, to, to change consumer habits, the value chain um, uh, backwards, uh, to, to, to the ground, we have in the European policies a lot of tools to support it. And we have uh, an, a new situation and a new challenge that not only the DG Agri 
is responsible for a consistent policy which which helps to to really deliver uh, 25 percent organic all over europe we have we have the uh, green deal um responsibility by um, commission vice president timmermans we have the uh, dg sante responsibility and um all of that what commissioner wojciechowski said that we need um cap strategic plans in every member states which is coherent to the um, european and the local organic action plans beside that we need a coherent policy in DG Sante and, and in the whole commission, bringing all these policies together that at the end, the consumer can make the right choice much easier. And for that, what uh, during this organic food con conference was discussed, um, the labeling policy, which is um, since years and, uh, and, and, and currently under, under discussion, under work by DG Sante, to create a good framework for, for a sustainable food system is crucial for us. And it's a, an opportunity and a threat um, um, by, by, by the same time. We know today, as we discussed and, and, and heard, that um, different approaches like the product environmental footprints, different um, assessments don't um, um, assess and measure right in a right way um, the public goods which are delivered by organic farmers, processors, or retailers. Uh, and, and we can we can prove it that many approaches are more or less contraproductive for a good consumer choice. Um, different label systems which are under discussion, like the, like the NutriScore or um, the trials with the EcoScore where unsustainable farmed um, method maybe can be greenwashed um, and um, making consumer choices, right consumer choices, even more complicated. So this is um, a key challenge of Commissioner Wojciechowski, of Commissioner Kyriakidis and um, the whole commission to, um, to deliver um, a policy framework from the cup, from the farming policy, agriculture policy, to the, the other food policies ending by um, the whole process uh, for, for a new um, legislation on the new GMOs, um, not to, to, um, to make new legal frames, which makes it for all operators, consumers, more co complicated, more burden-wise, or um, creating new obstacles to deliver 25% organic. So a lot to do on the level of policy or European policy, where we are partner of um, the commission and of all um, colleagues in the parliament and um, in the national governments and in the council that we, um, we all deliver this coherent framework. The organic sector, I think this is clear from this conference and from, from all other stakeholders um, supporting the the European Commission target in the Green Deal is ready to deliver, is ready to take action and is welcoming all um, farmers, entrepreneurs, pro new processors, retailers, welcome everybody who is engaging in the organic community and is um, part of um, this, this, this whole process to, to transform our food chains. It is clear that the active participation of the whole production chain, both in organic and in conventional, will be needed to reach the 25% target and a, a full transition at the end to a sustainable food systems. So in this sense, it is a good starting point this year. It's a good location in Poland. Congratulations to this conference, to all this contact and engagement, and, um, and to see that Poland can, can be a very important member state, a very important region to make it real, this change, um, to, um, together with all partners in, in, the, in the value chain. And um, so let's start, let's begin, let's take action. Thank you very much.
the end of this conference. So I would like to thank again our partner in, uh, in Poland, the Chamber of Commerce of Organic Food, and uh, thanks them not only for organizing and being with us in this day, but for the big job that you have done in the past months to make it possible. So I would like to thanks again, Christina and Agata, who have been working hard on that. An applause to them. Thank you. But I would like also to thank very much all the colleagues from, uh, from Brussels, so from IFAM Organics Europe, uh, Molly, Asta, Laura, Silvia, and all the team who has been working uh, behind the scene to make this conference possible today. An applause also for them. Thank you. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I'm very happy that I could be here with you physically and with you online. We talked a lot in these two days. We talked a lot about the future of organic food. And uh, I, I think we have a lot of food for thoughts now. So I, I wish you a nice afternoon and I wait to meet you again at the next iPhone event. Have a nice afternoon to all of you. Thank you.